here he is, the one, the only. <laughs> Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra 100 bucks. And here's the word right here. Well, Groucho, Anna Lindgren and uh, Edward File Jr. are on deck and waiting to talk to you. So for two minutes, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Anna Lindgren and uh, mm -hmm. Edward File Jr. Fail. Fail, huh? Now, let's get some vital statistics on you, too. Mr. Fail, how old are you? I'm 40. And uh, are you married? Yes, sir. I sure am. And what is your age, Anna? You can ask me. I don't mind. 38. You're, you're 38. Are mm -hmm. you married? Yes, I am. Are you two married to each other? Not to each other. Would you have married Anna if you'd both been single the first time you saw each other? I believe I would. Are you sorry you didn't wait a while longer before you... <laughs> Groucho, it's been so many years now, this is just purely reflection. Now, Anna, where are you from? Naples, Italy. And how did you meet your husband? Well, the first time I met my husband, we just happened to bump in each other on the beach in Naples. What were you doing, bumps? <laughs> no, I was swimming. You so was swimming? he, we happened to bump. What impressed you about him the first time well, you saw him? he was, he's six feet, one inch. He's blonde and he has a German nose. He has a German nose? Yes. What is a German nose? Does it resemble a pumpernickel? No. A German nose is a fairly sized nose. A large visa? Fairly sized, with a little bump right at the point. Yeah. A little plumpy, right at the point. In fact... You were doing bumps in the water and he had a bump on his nose. No, no. You're just bump happy. Well, now, this, this fellow that you met with the pumpernickel on his nose... Uh, Poor Howard. Would you say he was a wolf? I mean, did he sweep you right off your feet? No, absolutely not. Even though he was only a corporal, he was a gentleman. Then and now. Well, that's certainly a fine qualification. Do you like it here in America? Very much so. I think this is a land of opportunity and... You, uh, uh, you prefer America? Why do you like it here? Well, I think this is a wonderful country. Every day is something different or new. You may get up in the morning and just have a dollar in your pocket but you don't know what's going to happen in the day. So many things can happen, and there is chance, opportunity, and... I, I, I want to tell you, Anna, my advice to you is you, if you wake up in the morning yeah. with only a dollar in your pocket, you might just as well stay in bed. <laughs> I'm not <kidding. laughs> About all you can buy for that is a pumpernickel. <laughs> now, Ed, uh, that's your name, isn't it, Ed Fail? Right, sir. Uh, were you in the service, too? Yes, I was in the service about 13 years ago. Oh, I see it. this uh, thing here, but uh, what is that... Uh, Silver Star, Garfield. Silver Star. Well, that's pretty good. Huh? Were 15 years you were About 13 years active, Garfield. Were you overseas? Yes, about five years at that time. What do you think of uh, American soldiers who marry girls overseas? Do you think that's a fair thing to do to the girls who stayed home and waited and, until the ship was barely out of sight? <laughs> well, I think it's wonderful out there. You do, huh? Yes, sir, I do. What is your wife going to think of? After she hears about this kind of a reckless statement. Oh, she thinks it's going to be... A, she thinks it's great, you see. She does, Yes, eh? sir. She's an Australian war bride herself. <laughs> well, that restores my faith in American husbands. For a minute, I thought you were a man instead of a mouse. Now I see you're just a mouseketeer like the rest of us. Now, I can understand why Anna's husband was so anxious to marry an Italian girl. But, Ed, uh, what was there about your wife that attracted you down there, down under in Australia? Well, uh... I married uh, my wife because uh, she was good looking and she was there. <laughs> and you don't have to go any further. And, and come, That's a real come. practical man, this one. <laughs> now, Anna, let's get back to you. Do you miss sunny Italy? I do occasionally. Uh, how about Italian food, Anna? Do you prepare it frequently for your husband? Well, my husband loves Italian food. He does? Yes, he do. How often do you give it to him? But I'm uh, Americanized it. Amera Americanized it now. <laughs> You've Americanized the food in your house? No, I am now. You're American now? So, yes. So what Quite is the often. difference? Doesn't he get any more Italian food? No, not so often. Whenever I can spend some time in the kitchen, all right. Otherwise, I do just the American way. Grilled chop, pork chop, steak. Open a uh, package of frozen vegetable, a can of uh, peaches, and I get out of the kitchen. Like 
Well, that's the American way. Get out of the kitchen in a hurry. Well, if your husband is smart, he'll eat the American way. Load the family in the car and head for the nearest hamburger stand. I love hamburgers. You do, eh? Well, you're a nice couple, and I'd like to continue this, but the time has come for you to win some money, so let's play you bet your life. Okay. You selected American history. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you'll win $1,000. Are you ready? The third Chief Justice of the United States, and probably the most famous one, served for 35 years. Who was he? Marshall. John Marshall is right. You don't have one right. You better discuss yeah. it with her, because she may have said something else, and that would have confused Fenneman, who was very easily confused. <laughs> Now, what war involving the United States was known as Mr. Madison's War? The War of 1812. The War of 1812. The War of 1812 is right. Yeah. You don't have two rights. What was the popular war cry of the Americans during the Spanish-American War? Remember the main. Who was the British general who surrendered at Yorktown to end the Revolutionary War? Corner Wallace. Corner of Wallace, and what else? <laughs> what was the other street? That's all. Just one street, corner of Wallace. That's and you got four in a row right, so you win $1,000. Corn Wallace! <laughs> now, you can, now you can keep this 1000 and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at five or even 10000 so go over there and sit down and think about it. Okay. And thanks for being on the thanks show. Thank you very much. Gotcha, we have uh, quite an unusual couple who are waiting to meet you. Larry Lane and Otto Carter. So, folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. <laughs> Larry Lane and, and uh, Otto Carter, huh? You mean we have two men up here? Now, which one is Larry? Hi. Oh, you're Larry. Sonny, your voice hasn't changed yet, but I must say everything else has. Oh, my real name's Corinne, but... Oh, Corinne. Mm -hmm. Well, it's L-A-R-I, anyway. Oh, L-A-R... Oh, yes, I see. Now, how did a guy like you get a boy's name like Larry? Well, because it's, uh, I don't know, for a professional name, you know. And it's catchy and cute, and they just think I look very feminine, so nobody could think of yeah. me. Well, you don't look like Maxie Rosenblum. <laughs> Now, why do you need a professional name? What is your profession? Are you a ball player or a wrestler? No, I'm an actress. Oh. Well, many actresses of my acquaintance are also wrestlers. <laughs> they become wrestlers when they made my acquaintance. <laughs> are you acting anywhere? Okay. I'm glad you like it. Are you, uh, uh, yes, are you acting anywhere professionally at present? Mm-hmm. Where? I'm on television three nights a week. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're doing a lot better than I am. I'm only on TV once a week. <laughs> what do you do on TV? Uh, are you straight well, drama or musical or a dancer or what? I'm Miss Boom Boom for Mark C. Boom. You miss you miss Boom Boom? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid of the next question, but uh, <laughs> somebody's got to ask it. <laughs> now then, what is a boom boom girl? Well, uh, I beat the drums and sell tires, and a drum goes boom, boom, and that's why I miss boom, boom. <laughs> Could you give us your commercial? Could I? Well, uh, of course, there are certain restrictions. Uh, well, I don't have a drum. I mean, you're not going to mention the name of the product. Is there a drum in that uh, aggregation? <laughs> have you got a drum up down there for a, a boom, boom girl? <laughs> Is that the type drum that you got? Yes, that'll do. You now, really Larry, I have a word of caution. You can do your commercial, only you mustn't mention your sponsor's name. Whenever you come to the sponsor's name, just point to the drum. Is that clear? <laughs> now, who are you? Uh? Uh, Tom Remersa. Yeah. I play in the band. You're not... <laughs> now, what do you play in the band? Uh, drums. You, you're the drummer? Well, I've never seen you because you're always facing the right. other way. Huh? <laughs> Tom Romero? Romerser. Romerser is your name? Right. Are you a good drummer? Or you like the rest of these problems? <laughs> Same union. Well, Boom Boom, would you mind shaking hands with Boom Boom? Uh, nice to meet you. Are you married, Tom? Yes. Take back that handshake. <laughs> now, Tommy, when she points to you, you hit your drum, huh? All right. Now, fire away. Boom Boom. Good evening, friends. I'm Larry Lane, your boom boom girl. And I'm beating the drums for 
<laughs> that was the sponsor's name. And, uh... The sponsor's name is Boom Boom? <laughs> no, so, uh... Anyway, let's see. Well, you get two tars for the price of one, and here are two kisses from your Boom Boom girl. Now, for the about, price of one. Doesn't he get any kisses? <laughs> no, 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 I mean the regular kind. Huh? No, that's not Why what not? we sell. We sell this time. Drag this <laughs> yeah, but Tommy has tires. He doesn't need any tires. He needs what you've got, not what he's got. <laughs> Well, boom, boom, I was quite impressed with that. You said you sold me, and after the show, I'm going right out and buy a drum and beat it out of town, huh? We got the boom, boom out of the way. <laughs> Who are you, Dennis Crosby? <laughs> I'm Pop Carter. What do you say you are? Pop Carter. You're a Pop Carter, I know, but what is... I don't care what you are, what is your name? My name is Pop Carter. Oh, you're going to stick to that, huh? <laughs> well, you're a fine-looking lad, Sonny. Thank you. I'd say you were around 28, huh? Am I close? No. Are you 60? No. 70? No. You're not 80, are you? You gotta go further than that. I would if you weren't here. <laughs> you would. How about 90? You gotta go again. Don't tell me you're 100 years old. You gotta go again. Well, I'll take one more guess. Six hundred and fifty. I'm a hundred and two. A hundred and two. Well, after talking to Boom Boom, that's exactly my temperature. A hundred and two, huh? Have you ever heard that song, I'm 94 today, Pop? Not yet. No. Well, it goes like this. I'll sing it for you, a little of it. I'm 94 this morning, I am 94 today, and I'm not so young as I used to be, and I'm getting old and gray, but my heart is young, and I'm fond of fun, and I'm very young and gay, and I'm getting married on Thursday noon, I'm 94 today. Of course, down in the village, it will be a big surprise. The people think it's all a joke, and the minister's telling lies, but we will have the laugh on them as sure as you're alive, for there's gonna be a christening yet. Before I'm 95, I... Well, that's the way it goes. Out. That used to be sung by Will Fife, a great Scottish comedian. Now, Pop, uh, do you have any secret for such a long and healthy life? I eat anything I want. From a lobster down to a piece of watermelon. Do you smoke, Pop? I smoked ever since I was two years old. <laughs> Must be pretty well broken in by now, isn't it? <laughs> Do you drink? Yeah. You set it in front of me and find out. <laughs> you know, after hearing your health secrets, the American Medical Association is going to demand equal time. <laughs> Are you in pretty good shape, Pop? For example, how is your eyesight? Well, I can see, but I can't see close to me. Well, there's no point in staring at Larry, then, or you, <laughs> you'll ruin your eyes for keeps. I don't want to be rude, Pop, but uh, how are your teeth? I left them on a shelf at home. <laughs> now, Mr. Carter, I forgot to ask you, uh, where were you born and when? I was born in 1856, Samson, Texas, behind the stage. My mother and father were toe dancers in the vaudeville. Oh, and uh, did you go in the vaudeville too? No, I learned how to skate. You what? You were a skater? Yes, sir. In a circus? No, in the vaudeville. Well, do you think exercise uh, all your life has contributed to your 102 years? That's right. What kind of exercise do you take now? I bowl. You I bowl? I play tennis and skate. Uh -huh. well, now, are you married, Pop? I ain't now. You're not? Well, are you looking for a girl? Why shouldn't we? <laughs> How long were you married, Pop? I was married 72 years. You're a real iron man. Do you have any children? I had seven girls and nine boys. 
Sixteen children, huh? Sixteen I had, sixteen I had, six that's the twin. Oh. Well, you must have... said I was a man. <laughs> Sixteen children, huh? That's right. How old are your oldest children? Eighty-two. Are they still in school? <laughs> no, they're sending their grandchildren to school. Oh, how young are the youngest? He's thirty-six. How about grandchildren? How many do you have? I have sixty-nine. Oh. And you have thirty-nine any... great-grandchildren and nineteen great-great-grandchildren. I see. still say I'm a man. <laughs> In other words, you're responsible for about 150 American citizens. Yeah. You like to buy the Christmas present? <laughs> I like to buy presents for them. Each for one. Fun. Not only one alone. No. Each one. How many? 155. No. You should have thought of that 90 years ago. <laughs> well, Pop, there's only one more question I want to ask you, and of course, this is a natural question. What do you think of Boom Boom? I think she's a nice lady. Thank you. When is the last time you kissed a pretty girl like Boom Boom? Last night. <laughs> last night and you're 102? That's right. I want to ask you one more question, Pop. <laughs> What'd you do with those roller skates? I can, oh, I can make a fortune just renting them out. <laughs> but you make a lovely, charming couple, and I'm sure that the road ahead has holds many surprises for you two. <laughs> now, let's see how you, well you work together as a team. Let's play your bet your luck. You selected hit tunes of the 1950s. Jack Meekham will play some of the hits during the 1950s, and you name them. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Here we go. This is the bestseller of 1958. What's the title? <laughs> You have one right now. Now, Perez Prado, is that right? Mm -hmm. Perez Prado made this one popular. Okay, what is it? What is it, Dad? I do not know. It's the first time I've heard it. <laughs> First time I've heard it, too. Well, it's Patricia. Oh, that's it. Yes. Oh, you knew it, huh? You were thinking of the drama, weren't you, huh? <laughs> you now have one wrong. If you get the next one wrong, the game is over for you. All right. Former Vice President wrote the original of this one in 1912. Former Vice President Dawes. He wrote the original of this in 1912. It's a current hit, and what is it called? What is it's it? It's all in the game. You said it, good. That's right. Now you're back on the right track. You have one right. All right. What is this one? <laughs> Left, right out of your yeah. heart. <laughs> well, now you got one wrong again. All right, listen to this one and tell me what it is. I just don't know. Catch a falling star. Now, you missed two in a row, so you're all through. Now, we, we don't want you to go away broke, so I'm going to ask you one more question for $100. What ocean borders the Atlantic coast? Get the question again. <laughs> what ocean borders the Pacific Coast? Pacific Coast. No, I'm sorry. It's the Indian Ocean. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway for being with us. You bet your life. Goodbye, Boom Boom. That means our first couple can try for the double chance at five or $10,000 tonight. 
All right, George, we're ready to see who wants to get a crack at all the money. All right, uh, Anna Lindgren and Ed Fail, would you come back out, please? Well, you've won $1,000 so far. If you yes. decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of $500. Now, what are you going to do? We're going to go, aren't we? You're going to go ahead. Yeah. You are going for the big money. Yes, Okay, sir. now, you know you get to pick two numbers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, pick the first number for $10,000. Five. Now, if that number comes up, the question is why $10,000, number five. Now, pick another number, and this is for $5,000. Seven. Five and five seven. Five is first, seven is second. This is uh, for $10,000, and seven is for $5,000. That's right. Right? Now, if neither uh, number comes up, the question is why 2000 Are you ready? Fine. Give it we a turn, are. one of you. Numbers were five and seven. Neither of them came up, so this question is worth two thousand dollars. Ready? The composer of the tone poem *Finlandia* died near Helsinki in nineteen five seven, at the age of ninety one. For two thousand dollars, what is the name of this composer? One of the great men of our time. Now take your time and think of it. Take a guess. Edward Green. No, I'm sorry. You should have known this. It's Sibelius. Well, you've won 500 between you. Fine. That'll give you enough to get back to Italy and get a divorce. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, congratulations and thanks for being with us. You're a real man.